Good afternoon. Um, according to my festival clock, it is now 10 past 4 p.m. And um, I would like to welcome you to the session, Digital Competencies of Students, how they are assessed and can contribute to student success. Um, I hope you enjoy the session and also that you will find an opportunity to discuss the topic further afterwards and um, enjoy the talk now and have a good session. Yeah, thank you. A warm welcome from us to you to this session too and we like to start now with our presentation the title as you can read are digital competencies and yes pascal <laughs> changed the slide and first we like to speak about the conceptualization later the assessment preliminary results and the relevance for higher education at last. Next one. Yes. Why we need digital competencies? We need it. We need a competent use of digital technologies as a central prerequisite for the world of work, but also for participation in society. Therefore, the aim here is to capture the extent to which these competencies are developed by students as a self-assessment, because this is relevant to action. Until now, in Germany, we have the situation that the quality management instruments often lack the recording of digital competencies. But we need a description and promotion of competencies because it's important for module descriptions for study programs. And more than 85% of all German higher education institutions named the provision of the skills for a digital world as an important part of their digitalization concept and this was before the COVID pandemic and so we can suppose that's more now but we don't need yeah thank you for the conceptualization it's important as in source that the Aktionsrat Bildung calls for digital sovereignty in digitalization and higher education. This means being able to handle digital media under one's own complete control as an essential prerequisite for social participation. Another source is the Future Skills Paper of the Stifterverband that differentiated into non-digital and digital key competencies and distinguishes these from digital specialist skills. Next, yes. Here we focus on general digital competencies. It's not to be understood as technological competencies, but more in the sense of digital education, especially including societal, ethical, and social aspects as central aspects. And our search and selection of suitable concepts leads us to a, the EU digital competence framework named DCOMP, containing the following five dimensions. As you can see here, in the tetraeda, the first one is information and data literacy. Second, communication and collaboration. Then content creation, data security, and problem solving. The last one is also a part of general skills. But yeah, here it's included in the digital competencies. The procedure of capturing decomp of students is now here our topic. And therefore, we did an operationalization 
of digital competencies for concrete items based on the DCOMP EU uh, concept. And we made it here at the Humboldt University of Berlin. In addition, for some central assessment questions that not provided for a DCOMP, we tested and used some free text questions to capture knowledge. For example, on criteria with which the reliability of information from the internet is explained by the students. This survey instrument were piloted at the Humboldt University in the last two years and proved to be practicable. And in an exchange with several universities, it leads to a cooperation with the University of Freiburg and the University of Cologne, and later with the University of Gießen. And it's Pascal, <laughs> and she will do the second part of the presentation. But in the following, first I show some results across universities to show common tendencies and we found similar results within the universities. So it's good to see this in one chart. And it's based on about 70,000 cases. Yeah. So next one. Uh, as you can see here, um, this were different um, time slots for capturing. And this was in all in the COVID pandemic time. It was in Freiburg in, from February to May 2020, and the Humboldt University and the University of Cologne in spring 2021. And yeah, next, um, we had a lot of master, but the biggest part is yeah, from bachelor students, as you can see here, and 67% were female and the rest diverse and men. Yes, next one. So here it's an overview. And as you can see, it's different in the five dimensions. And for example, next one, Pascal, you can see in the dimension creation of content that know how to apply licenses and copyrights. It's yeah more problematic than, for example, uh, above the yeah, searching strategy on the internet or identify information needs and so on. And the second more problematic item is know how to adapt for myself digital competencies and uh, <laughs> digital technologies <laughs> and services for better social responsibility. And that's what I mean before as the social aspects. And yeah, that's one example for it. And I think for this aspects, we need attention for the future. And for this aspects, we have to do uh, some support things in the teaching at the universities, but we will later come back to this. And now I like to change to Pascal. Thank you, Rene. So the next part of our presentation will be my part. My name is Pascal Petri, as Rene already introduced me. And today I'm going to present some preliminary results concerning the role of digital competencies during studying and in particular during studying in pandemic times. So let's just start with some background information so that we all have a common start background. Um, you can see here listed some keynotes extracted from several large scale studies that have been conducted during approximately the last two years 
among students in higher education in Germany. And we have listed some positive and some negative aspects in the eyes of our students. And I will outline the aspects in the following. So at the left hand side, you can see some, so to say, negative aspects. That is, for example, uh, more than two thirds of students reported that they attended exclusively virtual teaching and more than half of the students reported that they really miss on site interactions. And this is especially true for first year students. Nearly one third of students further reported that they are rather dissatisfied. And we know in comparison to satisfaction rates from pre pandemic data that students were rather dissatisfied and had a lower average satisfaction rate than before the pandemic, which is not at all very surprising. Further, there are also some positive aspects in the eyes of our students. For example, students reported that they are um, happy to be more flexible in their schedules, so they appreciate it to be more flexible when they attend online courses. And surprisingly, more than 40% reported that they are rather satisfied with their own academic achievement. So this is so far just like a quick summary of how students reported um, their experiences during studying in the pandemic, and we will now come to our concrete own study. So our focus was on studying during the pandemic, and we had two broad research questions in mind. The first is that we were looking back and we um, acknowledged that there is a wealth of literature on, for example, the prediction of study success, student satisfaction, dropout intentions, and we were wondering if our pre-pandemic findings still hold under the condition of virtual teaching, so under the more or less remote um, teaching. And in particular, we were interested in the specific role digital competencies might play within these uh, well-known relations. So at first, I would like to introduce the main predictor in our today's uh, study. The main predictor is self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is defined as the belief in one's own capability to successfully master challenges in certain contexts. And we do have a lot of information on self-efficacy. So there are even meta meta analytic findings that prove that self-efficacy is one of the best single predictors of different operationalizations of study success. And we further know the more context specific self efficacy is assessed, the better is the prediction. And as we were concerned about studying during the pandemic, and we had a specific focus on freshmen during the pandemic, we assessed freshman self efficacy. The good news here is that we already did research on self efficacy in freshmen before the pandemic. So we can now compare pre versus pandemic data. And just to give you an overview, you can see several well-known associations here. For example, um, the predictor freshman self efficacy could predict several outcomes in longitudinal studies. For example, you can see the significant associations between self efficacy um, assessed at the first semester and student satisfaction at the end of this first semester, or self efficacy and dropout intentions and self efficacy and grade point average. And you can see that there were significant associations even with longitudinal predictions. So this is based on pre-pandemic data, and our um, study at hand is now focused on pandemic data. So in concrete, you can see our research questions listed here. And the first research question was about the role of digital competencies. We asked, do digital competencies potentially serve as a mediator between the predictor freshman self-efficacy on the one hand and several criterion variables, for example, student satisfaction, intention to drop out, and grade point average. Further, we were interested in potential differences between study fields. And the second research question addressed potential differences between study fields in freshman self-efficacy. And the third research question addressed potential differences in um, digital competencies. So just to provide you with an overview of our study design, we conducted a longitudinal study. We sampled students. Um, three times within the first year in higher education. We started collecting data in November, December 2020. This was just some weeks after they started their studies in higher education. And we sampled them again at the end of the winter terms in February, March 2021. And finally, at the end of the summer term in June, July 2021, we asked them again about several aspects of their higher education studies. Just to provide you with some overview about the sample we collected, you can see displayed here the distribution across study fields. And 
As you might remember, the second and third research question address potential differences between study fields. You can see here that we do have a very heterogeneous sample. You can see displayed here percentages, and we do have several fields of study represented in our sample, which is important if we want to address potential differences between study fields. And further, just to give you an idea, when we assess which variable, you can see this listed here. At the beginning of the study, at the beginning of their higher education studies, we assess freshman self-efficacy and the potential mediated digital competencies using the questionnaire outlined by Rene before. At the second point of assessment, at the end of the winter terms, we ask them about their study satisfaction. And finally, at the end of the summer term, we ask them about potential dropout intentions and about their grade point average as a measure of student success. Here you can see the uh, zero order bivariate correlations and the highlighted ones revealed significance. This is all based on the pandemic data. And we can say that we were able to partially replicate the findings and the bivariate associations that have been known before based on pre-pandemic data. To address the first research question, you can see that displayed here. What we can see is that we do have a mediation model that is displayed here with the blue lines. And you can see that we do have the predictor of the right-hand side study satisfaction as the outcome variable and the whole model revealed significance. We were able to explain about 19% of variance in this criterion variable study satisfaction. And you can see the mediation model here. The idea was the higher the level of freshman self-efficacy, the higher the study satisfaction. This is to see here with the standardized path coefficients that are positive and significant. And the further idea was that potentially there is a path from freshman self-efficacy, higher freshman self-efficacy leads to higher digital competencies, self-reported. And this, this was our hypothesis, could lead to a higher level in student satisfaction. Surprisingly, uh, contrary to our hypothesis, we uh, observed a negative path coefficient, a negative path between digital competencies and student satisfaction. That is, the higher the level of self-reported digital competencies at the first point of assessment, the lower the study satisfaction at the second point of assessment. And I will come back to that later in the discussion part. The second mediation model is the same principle, but with a different criterion variable. This is intention to drop out. This model, again, revealed um, a significant we were able to explain about 6% of the variance in the criterion variable. And as you can see here, the path between digital competencies and intentions to drop out did not reveal significance. And the third and last mediation model, you can see that at the next slide, this model is uh, a grade point average. And what we observed is, again, a significant model in total, about 5% of explained variance in the criterion variable. Um, and again, we observed a negative path between digital competencies and grade point average. Further, to address the second and the third research question, the, third, the second research question was uh, about potential differences in freshman self-efficacy between study fields. And this question is to be answered very quickly with no. We did not observe any significant differences between the different study fields, but the third research question addressing potential differences between study fields in digital competencies. This question is to be answered with yes, we did observe differences. This is in line with Renee's findings. And to provide you with some more details, you can see the graph at the right hand side here. Every study field is color coded and the two dimensions in which study fields differ in their average digital competencies self-reported by the respective students are problem solving and data security. So these are the five dimensions that have been outlined by Rene before, and we observed potential differences in problem solving and data security. To come up with the discussion, we would like to sum up our findings and to talk a bit about the relevance for higher education, about practical implications and some outlook ideas. So just to sum it up, we could say that we were able to partially replicate associations between freshman self-efficacy as a predictor and several outcome variables. And we could show that digital competencies might serve as, an, as a mediator. And this is especially true for student satisfaction and robot intentions. 
What was stunning in our own data is that we observed a negative path, a negative path from self-reported digital competencies to student satisfaction. So when we were discussing these findings, we came up with one possible explanation I would like to share with you. So when we asked students at the first point of measurement, right at the start of their higher education studies, they might have overestimated their actual digital competencies and between the first and the second assessment, they might have came to realize that they are not that digital competent as they thought they were. So this might have led to a reduced study satisfaction level. This is one possible explanation. Uh, of course, we do not have the data to really prove that. That would be a nice idea to have, for example, a qualitative study to do interviews to find out what might be the cause for this negative path. Nonetheless, we can say that digital competencies are for sure crucial in the digital first year in higher education. And this is in particular true as we could prove that for different outcomes. Of course, our study has some limitations. This is clear and at hand. For example, our longitudinal study has to um, deal with attrition. This is not every student who participated in the first point of measurement still participated at the third point of measurement. This might have led to a little bias in our data, nonetheless, we could observe a lot of students in different fields of study. Um, so this is at least one indicator to tap more into details here. Uh, further, of course, we only use self-report. Renee uh, addressed that at the beginning. What we would like to do in the future is to have other forms of assessment, for example, knowledge tests. What are the implications of our own findings? Well, at first we would like to say that in our eyes, it is very crucial to uh, foster digital competencies, not only in students, but also in lecturers to make them competent in teaching digitally. And further in our eyes, it is important to have a differentiated assessment. So we need to use, for example, the, the questionnaire that have been outlined by Renee before to assess the different aspects of digital competencies and then to have a clear focus where to address uh, where to let, like settle our interventions, what to do when we like to skill up our students in, for example, study skill lectures. Renee's uh, data show in detail that one possible point to start it with an intervention on digital competencies could be licenses and copyrights, and further the point of adapting technologies to take over social responsibilities. What we would like to do in future research is we would like to compare self-assessed digital competencies versus knowledge-based assessments and to tap into the specific findings that have been outlined by Rene um, in just a short quick overview to, um, in terms of over and underestimation. And for example, on the item level, Rene found that um, Students tend to overestimate their digital competencies in terms of strategy for internet search, and they tend to underestimate their skills in terms of criteria for strong passwords. And on a broader level, what we would like to do in the future is to have more longitudinal studies, for example, to do study skills lectures with our students and afterwards to um, assess digital competencies again, so to evaluate what our uh, um, interventions are able to do for students and further it would be nice to have for example very long studies to look at what kind of digital competencies is needed for labor market entry as we as higher education institutions are asked to prepare our students for entry in labor market. So this is what we found um, with our own pandemic and pre-pandemic data and we would like to say thank you for your attention and we would be happy to discuss our findings with you. Yeah, you can also use the chat if you like. And if you um, click at the content library, you can find our slides as a PDF version. This is at the left hand side in the browser. So feel free to, to like uh, raise your hand or write something in the chat and maybe you can even uh, ask to be unmuted so to really talk to us. Nobody dares to raise the word. 
Okay, we do have some some minutes left, so please feel free to comment. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, we can show as an example the slide with the copyrights. Pascal. Oh yeah. yeah. Just let me. As an example for an overview, uh, what means the CC licenses? Yeah, just one second. Um, do you want to share me this this broad overview? Like, sorry. Um, I think it's one of the last slides as a reserve. So the backup, okay. <laughs> yeah, and the backup, yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Okay, Anne have no questions. She voted in the chat. It's also okay. Okay, Renee, I don't think I have this slide. Okay, um, I can uh, share it. If yeah, please, you like. please go ahead. So, I will share my slides. Okay, I have to jump to the end. I hope it's here. Oh, no, ah, Pascal, you are right, it's not here. You can but, show the overview uh, at the beginning, maybe. The big, the big graph, yeah, the 11, slide 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here you can see at the overview that's the most problematic aspect. But I will look at another presentation to show what I mean. <laughs> so in the meantime, if you have any questions, just give us a shout. You couldn't yeah. find the slides on the content library. Well, let let me have a look at that. Yeah. Okay. Let me briefly jump in. You uh, will need to um, use the share button on your file, so that yeah, will probably be available. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did that. Maybe you just refresh, and now you should. Yeah, it's, do that. it's visible in the shared Sorry, files my folder fault. now. Yeah. yeah no Thank worries. you for I, the for the hint. <laughs> just wanted to make sure. Yes. Yeah. Like so. digital competencies, you know. <laughs> so I think now that's the right slide. It's in German, but I think for the biggest part, uh, it's no problem. And maybe if you like, you can late later read it in original because it's not for me, it's uh, from the Bertelsmann company, an overview, and I can send it if someone like it as a PowerPoint or PDF file. Yeah, but it's just an example. Do we have our questions? No, it's not the case. So, yeah, it's also okay. So there was another question just about the slides, and I think that should be possible to see them by now. If not, um, you can send me an email and I will send the slides to you. Um, I just provide my email address here in the chat. Falls die Teilnehmer aus NRW sind, dort gibt es an jeder Hochschule eine Orca-Netzwerkstelle, die zu CC-Lizenzen berät. Ja, und in some other federal states, we do have open educational resources projects. And if you are interested in, it's also very interesting, you can search with the item open educational resources, then you can find it. Yeah, the, the, this is just a, an, an example about 
mm-hmm. an item to ask students about how they are able to like navigate in this mm-hmm. map um, about copyrights and licenses. It's not about how to teach them, but this is a nice mm-hmm. tool to like think about how can we skill up our students. Mm-hmm. Okay, but yes, we are now out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And yeah, <laughs> we will come back to this topic in the future, I'm sure. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs>